Hello everybody, so this is the platform game you might remember from the complete platform tutorial series. You may, or well maybe, maybe you don't, but this is a platform game, right? Here I am working on it. Here's this gun we made. It's pretty fun, right? It's a cool little gun, pretty fun to use. But wouldn't this machine gun be better if it were a triple machine gun? Aren't, aren't all machine guns better if they're triple machine guns? So I'm going to come into my code here where we have the, uh, where we make a bullet. And let's say we want to just make it like another two times, right? So we make three bullets instead of one, maybe add like a bit of angle variation on here so that they sort of show up and, it, and they make like a nice spread of three bullets. Now normally I would have to uh, run the game again, right? I'd have to like uh, recompile the game, go back through the menu, back into the game, pick up the gun again. Wouldn't it be great if I could just change that code um, and have it just impact the game in real time? Well if I save here um, and, ooh, what's this? Live. Reloaded gun. Step one at the bottom. Now I come into the game. Oh look, we did exactly just that. We updated the code in real time. Introducing the absolutely ridiculous GM Live, a tool from none other than the also ridiculous certified game maker Galactic Sorcerer Yellow Afterlife, who has made a million and one incredible things to help with productivity and hard to solve problems uh, in Game Maker for Game Maker developers. Uh, all links to all of his cool stuff in the description. Uh, go check him out, buy his stuff, it's real good. GM Live lets you do exactly what I just demonstrated. I can add GML to an event, save that event, and see my new code in the game without even having to recompile. Uh, now early on in development, recompiling your game's not really a big deal, takes half a second, but as it gets bigger your game takes longer to compile, not to mention you have to get back to wherever in the game you were, and so on, and it's a huge amount of time that even later might seem individually small. Um, but it racks up to be a huge, huge fraction of the time you actually spend working on your game. Uh, you're just waiting for things to compile, to check on a super minor change, or a level design change, or literally just to try a single different number. Uh, especially for things that are magic number heavy, like if you're doing UI, you're doing like UI boxes and things like that, um, where you're trying to get screen positions feeling right. You can spend a ton of time just waiting for the thing to compile. Uh, so believe me when I say that this tool is a complete game changer. Not only can it do what I've shown already, but you can set it up to reload rooms live, uh, change and edit sprites on the fly, it's crazy. Now I've known about this tool for a while, but I've been a bit honestly scared of it a little because how does this even work, right? Uh, and I imagine there'd be a lot of setup or maybe a lot of friction to getting it going, so kind of my own laziness uh, kind of put me off, but I was incredibly wrong, and it is now genuinely upsetting to me on a deep uh, human level to think about how much time of my short human life I could have saved had I just picked up this thing a lot earlier. Now I don't want you to make that mistake, so that's why this video exists. Uh, go get this tool. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you how to set it up and use it in the most basic way possible. This is assuming you're using the latest version of Gaming Studio 2, of course, but it does also support 1.x. It support, supports uh, version uh, 2.2, 2.3 onwards of Gaming Studio 2. It, whatever you're using, there's probably a version that supports it. Uh, first of all, just hop on down to the itch page and buy it. It is $30, which is a lot of money to a lot of people, but it is easily worth several times that, so it would be frankly kind of offensive if you charged anything less. Download it and make sure you get the right version. Uh, I messed up here, I went for GM Live for GMS2, when obviously I'm, I'm using 2.3 onwards, make sure you get that if, if you're on the latest version of Game Maker. I messed up here, and GM can be really lame about overwriting and replacing some of the stuff that gets imported. <laughs> Um, so please take a moment just to double check you got the right version. Import that YYMP file by going to Tools and Import Local Package. You're going to want to make sure you add everything, so click the Add All button, make sure all this turns green, and just click Import. You'll have a new object somewhere called obj underscore gm live. Go ahead and just drag that into the first room of your game. Make sure it's the first room of your game. Now, when you import that package, you'll have some included files. Um, they're a little tricky by default to find in Game Mix Studio 2, but if you go to this little hamburger menu, click that and click included files, you'll get this pop-up. We want to run this executable here, this GM Live server. So if we click open in Explorer, you'll get a um, file browser up, you go to GM Live, go to GM Live server.exe and run it and you'll get this little um, terminal window. Now you can just leave that um, little program running in the background for now and just forget about it and just leave it running while you're working on your game and come to the event of uh, an object that you want to make live, okay? In this case, it's the begin step event of our gun object for our platformer. And I'm gonna add this to the very top of the code. If live call 
open bracket, close bracket, close bracket, return, live result. There's a whole bunch of different uh, code and lines and ways to use this tool. Um, this is like the most basic, okay? Just putting this at the start of a uh, particular event. What this will do is it's gonna check while you're running the game to see if anything in here has changed. And if it has, it's gonna return that script instead of what's in here. So now I can run the game, build it, compile it, all this time that we're gonna be saving. <laughs> Go to new game, we're going to grab our gun. You can see it just shoots normally. And then we're going to come back into uh, Game Maker. We're going to change anything in here, really. Let's, um, let's make it so the bullets, as we make them, maybe they change color or something. Image blend equals C red, semicolon. Uh, save, and when we save, you'll notice down here in the corner, you get this little thing pop up if everything's gone right. Uh, reloaded uh, O-Gun step one. And if we check our little console window, you can also see that um, a client is connected and you can see also updated O-Gun step event there. So now if we come into the game, uh, when we fire, we see we've now got red bullets. And like that code, that change has just happened in real time. It's I, I can't get over how how magic that is. Now the only downside is there's obviously a little bit of setup you need to do each time you want to make a different event live, but usually it really is just that one line of code. A um, tiny bit more for doing rooms reloading stuff or some other fancy bits and so on, but the documentation is all right there. Read it, master it. If you're working on one project for any time longer than maybe about a week, I guarantee this thing is going to save you some amount of time. And uh, that's just going to get more and more the longer and bigger and more complex uh, your project is. It's generally best for making little adjustments, like, you know, I wouldn't try and just code your entire game in it because it's going to, even though it does like, I, I've noticed if like an error comes up, it does put it in the output window and says like, oh, we've run into an error and so on and then just try and warn you. But um, it, your game's probably still going to run and just like, ignore code after the point of the error like it, it, it's not good for for trying like entirely new stuff it's it's more good for like making little adjustments and tweaks to pre-existing code and, and trying things out the kind of situation where you would normally want to have to like recompile the game like over and over and over again right but seriously i i guarantee on in some part of your project it's gonna save you some time and it also just makes a lot of really boring aspects of development uh suddenly very fun again uh, so that's it. Grab this tool. I'll see you all next time. A huge thanks to all my Patreon supporters and a huge special thank you in particular and in no particular order to the following. Azrael Studios, Andy Brown, Starshock12, Cookie Draggy, Rachel Stewart, John C, Team D, Mr. Oz, Jordan Hake, Dalvor, Vacants, Phil Keen, Pong Pong Zhao, Andrew Gilbert, Michael Capone, The Holtzman Effect, Kaiser Ho, Justin Adega, Alex Schenkel, Troy Mera, Boris the Wizard, Zach Collett, Figgy, Cabbage Pants, Joram Pater, Leo, Scott Matthews, Mark Burgess, Sami and Yaya Legaglow, Rene Dam, Rupinda, Hare, Jason, James L. Anderson, James Siggins, Hyungjin, Relentless Rex, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Mike KB, Robert Churches, Matthew Gardner, Kimpo, Bowser the Dog, Max M, and Zephyr Flame. Thank you all ever so much, and thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.